opportunity remains silent after the dust storm on Mars has cleared, but the Mars Exploration Rover team is listening for opportunity. Now 15 years into its mission, they hope the rover will wake up and call home, but then there comes a time to face reality. It's become the storm of a lifetime for opportunity and Ray Arvidson. An enormous dust storm blanketing Mars was like none other for the rover, and certainly nothing Arvidson has seen as deputy principal investigator for the Mars Exploration Rover mission. Spread to a global event. The magnitude is the worst ever that we've seen on the planet, going all the way back to the 1970s with the two Viking landers. So I participated in the Viking lander missions back in the 1970s, and we, we worked through several dust storms and opportunity has been through other dust storms, but this is the largest dust storm that we've ever observed on the planet Mars. Opportunity had seemed unstoppable, overcoming so many odds. After 14 and a half years of a vehicle meant to go 90 days, maybe six months, um, most of it was still working. So we're still producing really good data. We are sitting on the side of uh, an ancient impact crater called Endeavor. Then the storm hit in June 2018, peaking in July. Communication from Opportunity stopped on June 10th. The dust blocked the sunlight, which is what Opportunity needs to survive or carry on. The rover is solar powered. When we lost contact in early June, there was one fortieth the amount of solar radiation getting to the surface because of all the dust in the atmosphere that we normally get to power up the batteries from the solar panels. So as soon as the, the vehicle sensed this, we surmise it said, I don't have enough power, so I'm not going to try to communicate back to Earth. At this point, all they have are reconnaissance orbiter images of where Opportunity now rests in Perseverance Valley, a place where Arvidsson is interested in exploring. It's called Perseverance because we thought we'd never get there. We're trying to figure out if the valley was carved by water, by wind, uh, or by ice, or some combination. And we're about halfway through that campaign. So we hope the vehicle comes alive because there's still a lot to do. And the, and the return on investment scientifically is just amazing. You know, we had a, a poll on the science team back in 2004. What's the latest that you think this vehicle will last? I think the latest date was 2008. So it's 2018, 10 years later, and it's an old vehicle. It's been through a lot. You know, Mars is a pretty harsh environment. It's it very, very cold at night and then comes up to about freezing during the day. Uh, and it's not made to last this long. However, I've learned not to bet against opportunity. While Opportunity sleeps, Arvidsson stays busy at Washington University in St. Louis as the rover Curiosity is still producing data. Well, Curiosity is a new class of vehicles, much bigger. It's too big to go by solar panels. So Curiosity has on its back end a parcel of plutonium-238, which is radioactive and decays. The heat produced during decay charges up the batteries. So Curiosity didn't really care about the dust. Arvidsson is on Curiosity's science team. So for Arvidsson, there's always work to be done. Even if opportunity is not part of it, he says there's nothing they can do except listen for opportunity to wake up. It could be months from now before it wakes up because if there's a thick coating of dust on the panels, it just will wake up if it's still active and say, no, I just don't have enough power, I'm going right back to sleep. We think after a few weeks from last contact, the vehicle will lose its knowledge of time. It loses its spacecraft clock. So we won't know exactly when it would wake up to try to transmit back to us. It says, okay, I'm waking up, I th sun's out, I know that, I know exactly what time it is, but here, I'll transmit this up and hopefully you guys will hear the beep. Arvidsson says they had first engaged in very focused, active listening, using a combination of listening and commanding methods. Every day, we would use the deep space net, the big radio telescopes, to actively try to reach communication through the low gain antenna that can accept commands directly from Earth. And had we established contact, the vehicle would wake up and start transmitting data. That hasn't worked yet. 
but we're also looking passively with the radio telescopes. Listening continues through a windy period on Mars, November through January. In the past, this time period helped clean the rover's panels. The sky's clear, and maybe some of that dust is blown off. So we'll continue to try to establish contact in a, a very focused way all the way through to January 2019. And even after that, we'll be continuing over the next maybe six months or so listening in order to see if we can get a command. As soon as we hear that, what we'll do is go into a mode where we're actively trying to get Earth back in control for the vehicle. And if still nothing, there's never truly a moment of abandonment. After that kind of focus period, anytime there's a big radio telescope that NASA operates, if there's a beep from that vehicle, it will be captured. Nearly 15 years into a mission that lasted nearly 15 years longer than expected. He does not have high hopes. They only anticipated the mission lasting three to six months. 90 days, six months, it wasn't a, a formal period. There's something called the primary mission, the first three months, in which we, we try to meet all the mission objectives. No one had the wildest idea in their heads that we would continue operations over 14 plus years. Okay, here's the deal. He says there are people who don't want to give up on opportunity. But as the dust settles, reality sets in. I'm philosophical about it. You know, it's time to, if we can't hear from her, move on to something else. Others are very much attached emotionally. They're, they're family members, basically, even though they're pieces of metal and wires. For the sake of the mission, where Opportunity was heading, he says waking up would be a moment to celebrate. Because there's a lot more science to do. And the great thing about Opportunity is we keep reinventing the, the mission for NASA headquarters who make the decision as to whether to continue to fund us. So the new mission will be finishing off Perseverance Valley, trying to understand how it formed in the role of water. Then we have with Endeavor what I call burns in a bucket. Burns are these ancient lake beds, but we've never seen them inside of a crater where the groundwater flow and the water conditions are completely different than out on the plains. So we're going to be writing a proposal over the next few months for the next three years with the expectation that we'll hear from the vehicle by January. For HEC, I'm Kathleen Berger.